Alright, so good day class. So today, we're going to start our lecture on part 1 of SPP document 203. So it's about the specialized allied architectural services. So this one is prepared by my wife, Etek Maricel Bicol. Uh, so this is a two-part lecture. Uh, uh, part A will be uh, this week and part B will be next. So, for the introduction, time and technology have evolved to a level where specialized architectural services are needed to complete, complement, or supplement the necessary work for the totality of a project. Okay, so, I think that you're also, uh, I think that you are also aware that technology uh, has been moving quite fast in the recent years. Okay, so, because of that, you will really need uh, specialized architectural, uh, uh, allied architectural services. Like, for example, uh, buildings in the past, they don't have integrated IT systems. And then, uh, more modern buildings uh, right now, you already have IT systems already installed to automate the building also. So, um, the functionalities of structures uh, they have become much more complex compared to the past uh, uh, 50 years ago. Okay. So, apart from the legal uh, definition supplied under RE 966, architecture may also be defined as the blending of aesthetics, functions, space, materials, and its environment resulting from the application of various technologies and skills in different fields. So, I think the key word there is the application of various technologies and skills in different fields. So, it's not only about architecture. We're also going to look on the contribution of the uh, electronics agents, engineers, um, the structural, the sanitary, and other allied services as well. And specialized architectural services deals with specific expertise for further enhancement of the architectural interior and exterior components of a project. Sample class, if you're going to uh, design a theater, okay, so I think you may need the services of acoustics engineers or lighting engineers for that, for that matter. Okay. So as projects become more and more complex, um, they would also, it would also open a niche for a specific expertise. Okay. So the architect's responsibility to man and society is to make sure that both the building and its physical environment enhance the lives of people by strictly adhering to national and international standards with regard to public health, safety, and welfare. So it's really important class, that you are aware, I think in professional practice one building laws, that you're aware of those laws which govern the Philippines and also relevant laws in the international arena, especially if you are doing high-profile projects or uh, projects which has uh, a large uh, It's already examples of design services within and outside the building which put under specialized architectural services. So you have architectural interiors, acoustic design. Okay, so when you say about uh, acoustics, it deals with the sound. You have architectural lighting, layout and design. The site development planning. Of course, I think, uh, and I think now you may, need, you may need the services of our environmental planners. Site and physical planning, comprehensive development planning. Historic and cultural heritage conservation, security systems, facilities maintenance support, building testing and com uh, commissioning, building environmental certification, forensic architecture, um, building appraisal, structural conceptualization, preliminary services, contract documentation and review, post design, dispute avoidance. And res uh, resolution. So, I think, uh, plus, I hope that some of you will venture into the field of law. 
because um, there's only quite a few architects who have who are licensed lawyers and who have studied law. Okay, so it would really help also our profession. Then you have architectural research methods, uh, especially uh, special building facility planning design and management of architectural practices. So a lot of uh, these class they require specialization. For example, in the building environmental certification, um, to, you may need to take the exam for the LAED okay, from the USGBC or United States Green Building Council in order to be uh, recognized as someone who specializes in uh, sustainability and the environment. So it's an international certification. So if you wish uh, for a building um, to be certified as LEED uh, compliant, uh, compliant or um, LEED certified, then you must hire professionals and, cons uh, or, and consult with them on how you're going to meet the minimum requirements. Let's go into architectural interiors. So this AI is uh, architectural interiors is specifically mentioned under sections 3, 4, G, and 14, uh, 3 of our 866, which involves the detailed planning and design of the indoor enclosed areas of any proposed building structure, including retrofit, renovation, uh, renovation for all architectural and utility aspects including the architectural layouting of all building engineering systems found therein. So depending on the complexity of the project, the architect undertaking professional architectural interior services must be sufficiently experienced in the planning, design, and detailing of architectural interior elements. So when you graduate class and become architects, I think, um, yeah, I think right now, you should already be contemplating on what kind of specialty you'll be doing when you graduate. Okay, so just like doctors, I think it's important also for architects to have a specialization in order for you to have a niche in the industry. Because there is already a, a flood of general practitioners in architecture. Okay, so if you are specialized in a certain field, then it will guarantee your survival uh, in uh the profession okay, so like what i said class learning does not end after the classroom it, learning happens until the day that you uh until the day that you uh, leave this world okay, so we are only temporary uh beings so as long as you're alive try to learn okay, so when you graduate you become architects uh, don't stop there Try to learn new things, uh, take your master's, after that do your doctorate, and do your uh, studies, and then experience and learn a lot uh, from practice. Okay, so, okay, so let's move this. So in the design of a building, the works on a development concept. To realize this, the architect develops the design by determining the size and interrelationships of interior spaces, laying out the furniture, uh, movables, equipment, built-in ins and fixtures to support the required activities, thus making both the exterior and interior spaces contribute to the total concept. So the architect plans and designs the architectural interiors of buildings such that they contribute to the emotional comforts of the intended end users. Now, in order to achieve this class, they must have what you call design thinking. It only means that when you design, you should always think of the users. So, put yourselves of the users. Okay. So, don't um, design something that even you will not... So, always look for comfort and functionality when you design. Needs of the people which will be using the space. So, the architects prescribe space plans, 
layout and prescribes furniture, assist the client in conducting bids or next checks and approves samples of materials, reviews and approves willing of architecture and interior components, conducts final inspection and approved installs uh, components and related items. So the architect may enter into a contract with the of record and as consulting architect for the architectural and interior services or working as a consulting architect for the architectural and interior services only. So this means that uh, if you're, uh, you're this designer, then you're the uh, ANSI could also, if you have the experience and expertise, you also be consulted. Uh, as uh, the consulting architect for AI, or you could all uh, be consulting architect for active interior services only. So it would really depend on the case or the setting. Okay. So like what I've told you before, class, in order to be a specialist, you must have the, uh, the experience and the technical know-how. So it would be, I think it would really help your case if you want to prove that you're a specialist to have as well as experience okay, so that you learn how to harm a lot of benefits for the client if you're not only familiar with the theoretical but you also know the uh, uh, this the act, um, actual implications of those theories okay, so if you can harm them, you're going to provide your client with the best service possible I think the, it means this is the method of compensation. So it's going to be like uh, what's highlighted there. So, so it would really depend class. I think there's a minimum uh, uh, described in our um, uh, for the architectural interiors. Okay? But it would really depend also on your experience and background complexity of the project also. So when you charge your fees, you should just uh, you should charge your client uh, fees that are fair in accordance to the amount of work that you're going to put into the project. Okay. Then you have also uh, acoustic design services. So throughout architectural history criteria in building design has uh, into space. So the continuing evolution of products and techniques in sound management and control has provided a wider flexibility in the design of the interior environment. So this allows the architect to build an environment that answers the acoustical demands of valid activities within an enclosed space. So you're going to uh, need um, Consults on acoustic design services. Okay. So, acoustics is you have the theater of Epidaurus. Okay. So, the theater of uh, Epidaurus, it's it's carved in a mountain, but it has perfect acoustics according to studies. Uh, well known universities uh, across the globe. Okay, so, you can just imagine the importance of acoustics in uh, building design. So these are matters that really require uh, specialists to get involved with the project. So the architect is the prime professional uh, commissioned the client for the building structure. Then your role class is to coordinate. But as a special at least for acoustic design, the architect prepares the drawings and specifications for acoustic design and treatment, sound control and reinforcement, sound absorption, reflectance, insulation, etc. Assist the owner or client in bidding out the work or in negotiating with a specialty subcontractor. Now, there, there are uh, also subcontractors that who specialize in acoustics. Then checks and approves samples of materials and equipment, conducts final inspection of work and equipment, and assists the owner in evaluating the amount due to this subcontractor. Okay. Now, in order to be a specialist for acoustic design class, like uh, our, like what I have said in a 
few slides ago, you need to have the expertise okay, and experience also to be credible. So, this is a field of study that you can venture or specialize in when you graduate or pass the board exam. Okay, so it's the same. So, you could work as dual capacity, you could be the architect of record or the consulting architect. Uh, and then the consulting architect, or you could all only be the consulting architect for a certain uh, project. So it would really, really depend on the situation. So the, the architect's fee for acoustic design services depend on the complexity of the works to be undertaken. So it would really depend class. Okay? So you should, when you bill your clients, it would just be fair. So, it is something that you have already discussed with him or her uh, before he hires you. So, this is, these are things that must be uh, discussed prior, for, prior, the, uh, prior to preparing the detailed plan. So, should the owner or client hire separately the services of the specialist consultants, their fee shall be for the account of the owner or client, it shall be paid directly to the specialist consultant. Or, for the specialized service, the payment of the architect services shall be as stated in the architect's guidelines. Okay, and let's go to architectural lighting layout and design. So, architectural lighting layout and design invo involves the detailed planning and design of light transmission, timing and control for compatibility with the architectural design concept. So, one of the limiting criteria in building design has been the need to control light. So, in an enclosed or defined space, the continuing evolution of products and techniques and lighting has provided a wider flexibility in the design of the building's interior and exterior environment. So, this allows the architect to an environment that answers the lighting demands of valid activities within and outside a building. So, lighting plus um, I think uh, even now at the student level, you're already aware on the impact of lighting towards the overall design and in setting the mood. Okay, so lighting is really important, uh, but you must study it as well because if you provide too much light, then it might be too glary for the users. Okay, and if it's too little, then... Uh, might appear too dark. So, like what I've said earlier, you need what you call design thinking. So, you should think what's best for the users. Then, aside from that, you must have the experience and the technical qualifications to do this. Okay. So, uh, like what I've said, I think, Asian, then you also have the experience. Uh, so, as a specialist for lighting layout design, the architect prepares the drawings and specifications for lighting design, illumination, fixture placement, uh, efficiency, energy considerations, etc. So you assist also the owner or client in bidding out the work and negotiating with a specialty subcontractor. You check and approve the samples of materials and fixtures and conduct inspection of work and fixtures. Then also assist the client to, the, to evaluate the amount due to the subcontractor. So, same, you could work as a dual capacity or just as the consulting architect for the So, for lighting layout and design services, would all, always depend on the complexity of the works to be taken. Okay, so, then, it, you should, the fee should also be, if it's quite simple, then you should also adjust the fee. So, what's important, class, is that you know how to charge your clients uh, fairly. So, this is something that should be agreed by both parties also. So, before they hire you, you must explain to the client, uh, make him or her understand the basis of your fees. Okay. So, it's really important that you read a lot 
especially the RGPX guidelines, in order for you to be able to present uh, your services in a professional manner. Okay, so we're going to end our lecture for this week, uh, the part A uh, for the architecture lighting layout. And this is part A. The next week, we're going to continue with part B. So when you finish part A and part B, I'm going to give you an activity. So if you have uh, further any questions, last or clarifications regarding our lecture for this week, uh, feel free to contact me uh, anytime. Then I would always reply as long as I have an internet connection or I'm online. Okay, so stay safe and um, I hope that you're all doing well despite this pandemic. Okay, bye-bye class. See you next week.